But essentially, we are the Freedom Party. We stand for the freedoms. We stand for the freedoms which Australians have a right to expect and which governments have a duty to uphold. We stand for freedom and will be freedom's bulwark against the encroachments of an unworthy and dishonourable government. A law which actually says a journalist might be jailed for up to 10 years for reporting on information that could be in the public interest just strikes me as wrong and inconsistent with basic press freedoms. For the last week, journalists and lawyers around Australia have been lining up to condemn the new law. The Australian Financial Review's international editor, Tony Walker, said it will have... ..a chilling effect on reporting of security matters in an environment in which parliamentary oversight provisions are extremely weak. And he added... This legislation will sit on the statute books like a rotting carcass. Australians will know less than they deserve to about what is happening inside security agencies at a time when they are larger and more powerful than ever before. Public servants, law enforcement officers and politicians often invoke secrecy to shield their conduct and decisions from legitimate public scrutiny. This should be rejected. The enemy confronting Australia is the government rather than Islamic militancy. The first will give ASIO unprecedented freedom to roam across the media's computer networks, making it much harder for reporters to keep contacts and stories secret. The second will force phone companies and internet providers to store their metadata for two years. This can tell ASIO who is talking to who and what websites they visit. And as political commentator Laurie Oakes points out, ASIO and the police already have access to such material. Enforcement agencies can get metadata without a warrant, as long as it is for the purpose of enforcing the criminal law or a law that imposes a pecuniary penalty or is for the protection of the public revenue. Laurie Oakes knows this from first-hand experience because back in 2008, he had the AFP investigating him. So, is strengthening the law and weakening media freedom part of a trend? Media lawyer Matthew Collins QC believes it is. I'm deeply concerned at the culture in Australia which has involved the chipping away of freedom of expression. Once you allow it to be chipped away, it becomes very hard to stop it. We've reached a stage where freedom of expression has been quite seriously limited in this country, in a way which would simply not be tolerated in countries like the US, the UK or Canada. 